Good morning YouTube, Ray Horvath Productions and we are on Hornada Road. This is the entrance to the Doniana Range here in southern New Mexico which is in the background right there. Uh, I have a lot of you asking me, well where do you typically ride when you put these miles on? Um, so I'm going to kind of take you through a short journey today and a typical ride that we do when we come out here. So this is southern New Mexico, Las Cruces for those of you that live in the area. Um, we basically live a couple miles back this way and we come down Horonado Road. This is one of the ways we come in to the Doniana Range. In the distance over there it's kind of hard to see but that is uh, Red Hawk Golf Course and there are the Donianas in the background. So we continue down this road for about four miles and then there's an entrance so come along guys and I'll take you on the journey and of course we have Ray, Mrs. Ray Horvath Productions there and our little weenie dog that you've seen in our videos and that is Mac. Hi Mac. He really likes to come with us when we ride. So come along for the ride guys and I'll show you a typical day that we do um, when we come out here. Okay everyone I'm going to try something a little different. I'm going to do a voiceover with a new microphone that I picked up. Um, so this is the first turn in um, to the Doniana Range. This is heading west, just for reference. Uh, but some of you were asking me, you know, where do you put so many miles on and where do you go? Well, this is a typical ride that we do. Um, our little dog comes with us most of the time. He likes uh, riding. Don't quite know why, but one day he just got in and he wanted to come. Now this arroyo that we're going through here um, sometimes has a little bit of water flow depending on the rain that's going on. It's pretty dry today. But uh, we follow this all the way up to a telephone pole trail. And then you can either make a right or a left, um, which you know, you'll see up here in a little bit. But as we get closer, um, you can make that selection and it gets a little more uh, scenic and rocky. Really, really nice day today. Really, really green. Um, Max seems to be enjoying it. So, yeah, we'll continue onward here. Guys, we're about seven miles in, and we came up from Hornada this way. And this is a favorite spot where our dog Mackie likes to get out and do his business. He walked away. He usually photobombs us. But this is the turn. We're closer to the Donana Range. And you know you're here because it's a telephone pole trail that takes us in. This is where we turn right. It heads in deeper to the Donianas. And if you make the left here, it heads back towards Red Hawk. And you can go around the front of the Donianas. But you can go in both ways. We typically just go in this way. So come along. We're still going. Now this particular area, after you make the turn... It, uh, it's a lot rougher than it actually looks. The suspension upgrade and even the stock suspension on the KRX really does really well in this type of terrain. And these are pretty big rocks. Um, and as you come through, there's some dips and washouts. But uh, the view is really, really nice as you continue through here. And at this point, we're probably about, I'll say, 11 or 12 miles from the house, something like that. Uh, there's a look to the left, and the trail continues forward, and um, you basically come up on kind of like a, a funnel type situation where the two mountains meet, and there's a nice overlook of the uh, Hornada del Muerto, and we'll stop up here. Okay, guys, this is one of the stops we usually come to. Uh, it's just another couple miles up, but this, you're looking out straight ahead over there. That is the, in Spanish, pronounced Jornada del Muerto, the entrance, and, or in English, the journey of death. Uh, you can look it up on Google. But it uh, basically, back in the day, it was a wagon trail that they would take uh, they called it journey of death because of the lack of water, but this is heading forward, obviously, but we came, I'll pan around here slowly, we came from back this way, and we're just entering the Donianas, and as we get up here, it becomes more rocky and bumpy, 
and then we're gonna go basically around this direction to the left. But uh, let's keep going. And as we move forward here, this is some of the most, uh, I don't wanna say treacherous terrain, but very uncomfortable, big boulder type scenarios. A lot of these rocks that are just embedded in the side of the mountain are uh, you know, 12, 14 inches, some of them bigger. But it's really, really tough on machines and 4x4s. I've seen Jeeps out here, but it's really tough on suspensions. So as you get to the bottom, you make a left, and uh, we start heading west again. And But we're going to take a little detour here and make a left turn. And this is now heading kind of south, southwest. And it's going to take us up into that uh, volcanic area. Now that range right there you know, on the opposite side is where we were standing just a little while ago. Um, but this way takes us to this uh, area that was volcanic. It's really green. And we like coming up here because uh, it's a favorite place for deer to hang out. And we usually see them early in the morning or late at night, especially in that vegetation area there up on the mountains. Uh, as you come up here, there's several trails that are small. They cut off to the left, um, but they end really quickly. People go and hang out there. I've seen people on the weekends uh, grilling and just kind of hanging out and having a good time. UTVs, Jeeps, off-road vehicles alike. But this area here, we usually come through and see some kind of wildlife. Um, it's kind of later in the day today, so we don't really see anything. Uh, but it's a really nice area. And as you get to the bottom, we make another right turn. And now we're heading back. That's a view directly ahead there of the Hornada. So we're heading back in that same direction. Um, and we're going to come back to the same trail and make a left back on it, and we're heading west again. So this is going to take us up to the entrance to the Double Arroyo. The Arroyo number one, as I call it, is on the left, and number two on the right. We usually take the one to the right. I think it's a little more scenic, uh, but they're both pretty cool. Um, and it narrows and goes through this region. And as we... Uh, proceed forward uh, the vegetation changes and you see a couple of interesting artifacts and finds out here the Doniana range is full of them and we're so lucky to have this in our backyard but right up here on the right side of the trail there's an old dwelling and you can see it I don't know if it was an old corral or old home we've looked through there and there's really nothing to indicate what it was maybe it was just for wildlife I mean horses or something that is a water catch it's on the opposite side of the trail had a date on there I think of like 1937 or something a um, little rock embankment that we climb but there's a lot of really neat finds out here and when I do part two of this I'll take you guys out to some of the mines that's a lot further north and um, closer to Summerford but as you can see straight ahead there, there's two old uh, tanks, water tanks, and one of them is uh, metal, the other one is concrete. I don't know which one was put up first or if they were put up simultaneously. Uh, neither one of them, I think, can hold water. The metal one's rusted out and full of bullet holes, and the other one looks like it has leaks in the bottom, but uh, it looks like it was filled with this... Uh, old windmill and I've never seen this uh, while I was standing up and I've been coming out here for about eight years but at one time it was connected obviously to this concrete uh, foundation and it probably pumped water into those for horses wildlife I am really not sure but this is continuing forward and this comes to one of the most narrow areas of the arroyo or part two arroyo two I call it and a lot of times there's surface water here and it makes it really, really neat because um, the wildlife will come into this area and there'll be maybe 30 or 40 feet of surface water just kind of trickling out. Um, today there doesn't seem to be any. But it's pretty steep, um, the cliffs around us. And even if there's not surface water, if I was to dig down here, you know, a few feet, I'm sure it would be damp and wet because we see where the animals have done so as well. But it's a really neat uh, area to come through. And uh, as you come up here on the right, this particular area we stop a lot of times. I'm not going to do it today. But we call this particular tree, my wife and I call this Max Tree. And you can see he gets excited when we drive up to it. But there's something about this tree that he likes. He, can, he wants to get off. We're not going to because he'll just roll around in the grass over there and 
get God knows what on him. But he'll roll around in there, and he will not want to get back in the uh, UTV. He'll just want to stay there and roll around, and we literally have to physically get him up and put him back in the machine to get him going. So we're not going to do that today um, because <laughs> we'll spend a lot of time just chasing him down. Um, we're just going to proceed forward. And uh, it continues and circles around and heading west. And he enjoys riding. <laughs> You're up in the air there. Now, this comes to like a little drop-off where erosion has taken place. Now, this doesn't look like much. It's kind of narrow. Most machines will fit through. But this is a step down. And you probably go from about six or seven feet down to the bottom there. It's not done all at once. It's kind of progressive in steps. But you got to take it pretty slow. Because if you don't, um, you'll break something. Uh, lucky enough, the KRX has a ton of clearance and, you know, it does it with no problems. There was times uh, we've been out here and some people on other machines were reluctant to climb it. Um, but you can get up there no problem. That gives you a better view of uh, kind of the step down. Um, there on the left in the picture is probably the, the biggest step down. But the tires drop pretty quick, but not too bad. But it makes the trail interesting. So we're going to circle back around and uh, head down to uh, a tree area. These are all oaks. And as you can tell, they get fairly good amount of water. They're nice and green. But there's an area up here that we stop at that we uh, really enjoy. So I'll talk to you a little bit up there. Okay, guys, so we stopped here at this little opening in the arroyo. The step down I just talked about is about a quarter mile back up that way. Mrs. Ray Horvath production. She always get mad when I put her on camera. This is one of our stops. Just kind of a rock embankment here. And an opening in the arroyo. And just like these oak trees under here. And this continues straight. Mac, of course, over here smelling. And we tend to pull over here. This tree right here provides great shade in the summer. So I'm kind of under here. You can get a sense of how big it is. People have put shells, uh, rifle shells in the tree. It's interesting. But nice little area to stop. We have brought the grandkids out here and it's a nice little shaded area. And again, the rocks how uh, they fell but a lot of people what they'll do too and i've seen this out here they'll pull their machines kind of close to this tree and they'll stretch a canopy across to the machine and it still leaves a lot of trail open there uh, for people to pass by but they can create more shade uh, in the summertime but anyway we're going to continue straight down this arroyo and I'll do the second part of this journey on another video. And we would be heading up that way, that trail. And uh, take you over towards Summerford and the mines. But that'll be on part two. But yeah, uh, this is probably the halfway point of our one of our normal rides. And uh, we'll just keep going. Thanks for coming along and uh, let's see what's up ahead. And as we continue, it... Uh, Pretty much a little of the same terrain. The rock variations differ, of course. Uh, we're getting closer to where I-25 is, but we're still quite a ways from it. Uh, the final left that we make starts us heading back south, and this is the shorter loop that we do. So this total loop is probably about 42 miles when we complete it and we get back to our garage. But there's a couple of climbs here that are really neat. Uh, gets rockier and then we're going to go into a really thick lava flow that is hardened and there be some uh, caves and things of that nature that you've seen in some of my previous videos so this is one of the climbs we go to the top here and this is kind of a point that we use we'll stop up here there is cell phone service at the top of that hill it kind of fades in and out depending on your provider but that, we always know there's cell phone service up there, so that can be one of our stops typically. And this is a left turn, and we're going to enter an area where the lava flow was really, really thick, you know, years ago, obviously. 
but it makes for really scenic terrain. I like to call this area up here Little Moab. Now, it's not the official name. I'm sure there's an official name for it and Google Earth or something like that. But I like to call it Little Moab because it just a ton of solid rock and lava embankments that are awesome to climb and just kind of toot around in. So right here you have to throw it into low gear. This is a pretty steep climb. The, the video is not going to do it justice, but this is actually really, really steep. So I'm in low, four-wheel drive, obviously. You don't have a ton of slippage here because this is just almost solid lava. So you have some loose rock, but it's not anything where you're going to lose traction. I mean, I could literally stop on the side of this and not a problem. But just lava flow that is hardened but popped to the surface back in the day. And it, it makes for interesting landscape. And as the desert gets rain and water, it just pops up. Similar to the area we were uh, just a, a while back when we did the circle around looking for the deer. But... This is a lava flow area, and we're going to proceed forward and take us out. And as we come to a loop, this is going to enter us into an area that I call the Twins. If, again, if you watched some of my other videos, you've seen this. And you can see all the trails in the background where there's off-road vehicles, Jeeps, motorcycles. A ton of people come up here and enjoy this terrain. And like I said, we're so fortunate to have this in our backyard. It's it's really, really nice. Uh, I don't even have to trailer. I can just basically leave the garage and head out, and we're basically in, in the trail system. And this is only a small piece of this. There are tons of miles back here that you can do, and I'm doing a shorter one for this particular video, but there's a ton of trails that still go further north from here, and petroglyphs and mines as I indicated and old sites that you know who knows what they were used for but this is the uh, the highlight of this trip I would say I call those the twins and they're two basic caves that uh, just were formed and I don't not not sure how they were formed but we'll stop up here guys and we'll talk to you a little bit and then probably call it uh, good on this video Please hit the like and subscribe button, guys. I appreciate all the support. But we'll talk to you a little up here. All right, guys. So we stopped here, and that's the way we came in. I basically just turned around. And if you guys have watched the previous videos, this is the area of the lava flow. Again, west side of the Doniana Range, what I call the twins. Basically two giant caves in the side of a lava flow. Not sure if it was water erosion or what, um, but very interesting formations. And this area is nice to come in because it provides shade most of the morning and even parts of the afternoon because you're basically in the middle of these two giant lava flows and it's just a, an arroyo in the middle. So there we are. And, uh, this is for part one. I'll do uh, part two. And on the next one, I'll take you guys around to some of the mines uh, by Summerford and where the Oryx hang out. Uh, but for right now, uh, this is part one of uh, a typical day in the journey uh, of the KRX here in the uh, Doniana Range. I appreciate all the support. Please hit that like and subscribe button. Drop any comments below. Um, I appreciate uh, all of you. Hope everybody has a great day. We'll see you in the next video.